We would now like to consider another example of cylindrical geometry. So let's consider a cylinder. It's a solid cylinder of radius A, and this is an infinite cylinder. And the cylinder has a uniform charge density rho, so rho will be uniform. And the reason we make the cylinder infinite is we've already, we could use the same symmetry argument to say that the electric field is pointing away from this axis of symmetry. But unlike the wire, there's now going to be some field inside. And so we have two regions of space, one and region two. And if I use a cylindrical coordinate system, then I can say that my region one is the, where the R is less than the radius or equal to the radius of the cylinder. These two regions will overlap where R is greater or equal to A. And because there's two regions of space, I'll need to apply Gauss's law twice for each region separately. I apply Gauss's law separately for each region. So again, we begin by, let's look at the region 1 for R less than equal to A. So we draw our source, A. And now, just like for a wire, I'm going to pick a Gaussian surface of radius r and length l. And the flux will only be through the body of this surface, just like on the wire. And so our flux, charge enclosed over epsilon naught. The flux is the electric field inside this region times the area of the cylinder, because remember, flux is E field on the surface, so the area is circumference, 2 pi r times L. And the charge enclosed, well, the charge enclosed, because the density is rho, this is just rho times the volume of a cylinder, and the volume of a cylinder, or radius r, is rho times the cross-sectional area A times the length of the cylinder, and we have to divide by our constant. And so you can see that we've calculated the electric field to be rho over 2 epsilon naught. The L's cancel. And it goes like R will make it a vector, R hat, for R less than or equal to A. And there is the electric field inside the Gaussian, inside our solid cylinder. Notice that this field grows like R inside. Now, now if we want to do the same calculation in region 2, we here will make our cylinder a little bit smaller, radius A. And now we choose our Gaussian surface. By the way, I should have shaded in the charge enclosed. We make our Gaussian surface. We use the same variable R, but now in this case, R is only bigger than A. We have a same length that doesn't matter, but remember R is always greater than A. And you can see that the charge enclosed is all of this. There's no charge outside the cylinder. And so in this case, when we set the flux equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught, our flux will be exactly the same e 2 pi r l. I could have said this is region 1 and this is region 2. The E field in region 2 points out. And the charge enclosed is only this. So instead of pi r squared, it has to be less. It's the cross-sectional area of the actual physical charge distribution, pi a squared times l over epsilon naught. And so this tells us that the electric field in region 2, when we solve for this, we get rho over 2 epsilon naught times a squared. And now, just like the field of a wire, the electric field outside goes like 1 over r. And this is true for r bigger than a. Now, if you substituted A 
into both of these results, you can see you would have the same electric field on the surface. So that's good. And what we see is inside, the field grew like R. And outside, the field goes down like 1 over R. And as a simple exercise, you should try to make a graph of this radial component of the electric field. We'll consider one more case of cylindrical symmetry. We'll consider an infinite cylinder of radius A. And now we're going to have a non-uniform charge density. So this is an infinite cylinder. And the non-uniform charge density, for simplicity, let's just write this as B times R. And this is for the region R less than or equal to A. It's 0 outside. And we want to now calculate the electric field. And I'm just going to do the calculation for the region inside the cylinder first. And the way I do that is we know the electric fields are pointing away. So I'm going to choose a Gaussian surface of radius r and length l, like I usually do for cylindrical geometry. But now the issue is I can't, when I do the charge enclosed, rho is non-uniform, so I just can't write rho times the charge enclosed. Because our Gauss's law calculation is Q enclosed over epsilon naught. The flux is still the electric field in region 1 times the area, circumference times length. But the charge enclosed is now an integral of the charge density over the Gaussian surface. So how do I set up and do that integrand? Now, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to imagine cylindrical shells. So I'll try to draw that shell right here. It's a little bit tricky. So this is a cylindrical shell of radius r prime and thickness dr prime. So the shell has a thickness. And what I want to do to get the charge enclosed is I want to figure out how much charge is inside this shell. That's just charge density times the volume of the shell. And the volume of that shell is just the area of the shell which is the circumference, 2 pi r prime times L. That's the area of the shell at a radius r prime times the thickness of the shell, d r prime. And so when I get to my integral, I've turned this three-dimensional problem into a one-dimensional integral, taking my shells starting at r equals 0 and integrating out r prime equals 0 and integrating out to the radius of the Gaussian surface. So I have 1 over epsilon naught. My shells are starting at the origin. They're going out to r, the radius of the Gaussian surface. My density is b r prime. Why do I use r prime when I wrote r here? Because r prime is my integration variable, and I want to know the charge inside that shell. And now I have the 2 pi r prime l dr prime. And again, this is a straightforward integral, r prime squared. And so I can do that integral. And I get 1 over epsilon naught b times 2 pi l r prime squared is r cubed over 3. When I put the r in there, I get r cubed over 3. This is the E field in this region. And so I now solve for that electric field in that region, and I get the two pi's will cancel, the L will cancel, one of the R's will cancel an R cubed there, and so I get B over epsilon naught times 3, and I'm just left with an R square, and this points radially outward for 0 less than R less than or equal to A. Now, as an exercise, you should calculate the electric field 
in region two by choosing an appropriate Gaussian surface. But just think about it. The only difference in region two is the charge enclosed will go out to the radius of the cylinder, the charge density. So the upper limit is the only thing that we change when we go into region two, and you should try that out yourself.